Hey guys, what's up? I'm at the American Automobile Museum in Elk Segundo near LAX. The Pontiac car show we're going to do today. So I'm inside, clearly, but that show is outside. Hopefully interview some cars and owners <laughs> and, you know, see what we can find. See, here's a crazy. Most of this parking's on the street. Uh, I'm right back here. I got to show you guys who I'm parked with. It's uh, a guy who actually works for Hot Wheels. Pretty cool, we'll interview him later, but this is the deal. This looks like a 67. I love the stance of this car. Almost looks like a modern Camaro wheel. Nice. Hey Wes, I found your car. You know what? I didn't know you had a 68, dude. You're holding back on me? Looks awesome. Those of you guys don't know, Wes is actually building a 69 with a monster turbo. So I'm looking forward to that project when he's done. And he brought the kids, look at that. What year is this, John? I think it's 71. 71-ish? Nice and clean. Seven. It's got my wheels. U.S. Mags. This might be the next project car, team. Yeah, it might be the next project. This is, this is the deal right here. Looks awesome. Let's check this out. 72 GTO. You don't see many of these. But look at the rake on this. Pretty cool. It's got an automatic. I like the gauges. I gotta do that as my next project. Blue. Blued out bumper. 73 Firebird. I'm digging the, the Gen 2s. Might be the next project. Guys, this is ridiculous. Look at this. This is port injected on a 400, or whatever this is now, probably 455, but look at this. This is like a one-off. I've never seen this before. On a 66? Wow. That's inspiration right there, fellas. And ladies, if you're watching. Hey guys, I'm here with Josh. I found his car, which actually found me first, but then we walked down to his yep. car. 55 Pontiac Chieftain? 53 Pontiac Oh, Chieftain. 53, sorry. Yeah. My fault, my fault. Yeah. Can you walk us around the car and give yeah. us a little tour? It's a 53 Pontiac Chieftain. It's kind of rare. It's got a straight eight flathead. Oh my God. And three on the tree. And so this looks like original, right? Yeah, Having absolutely. Not restored. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was a car out of Sedona owned by a a lawyer that was getting up there in years and it was his original I think his first car wow. so pretty cool yeah and yeah picked it up in like 2019 and did some some paint work on it and someone else said it's a six volt system yep right? six volt system before the 12 volt Wow. did the interior on it actually the seats are in really good shape oh, wow. and just yeah. had to do you know the kick panels and or the really the flooring carpet in there nice yeah it's real cool it's got a lot of real cool accents with all the you know stainless chrome whatnot mm -hmm. really really quiet runs real well are you selling it yeah I'm selling it all right all right guys if you yep. want it yep call Josh absolutely any other uh, piece of information that you know um, been pretty much garage kept its whole life. Yeah. That's, I think that's what kept it in such good shape. I believe it's been painted once. Um, yeah, man. It's 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 pretty pretty cool cruiser. Super yeah, reliable. Sure. We've driven it all over Sedona, all over Southern California, and yeah, yeah, it's nothing fun. beats the reliability. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. you look at the age of it, and you'd think you'd have concerns, but honestly, it, I I really think it's more reliable than my, you know, my. 66 stingray <laughs> right yeah right literally well there you have it guys i've never seen a 
a 53 chieftain in my life in person, so that's pretty cool. So thank you, Josh, for giving us you the bet, tour. Man. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you got to call him if you if you want to buy it. Yeah, and, I know. Uh, it's it's for sale. You know, it's uh, it's it's. To I'm torn too because I really like driving it. It's fun. It gets a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. You know, but running out of garage space, and I got another one coming home soon. Yeah, so. seriously. And you can't rebuild the motor because no. it's already reliable. <laughs> so don't yeah, touch it. Don't touch it. Yeah, exactly. Right on. But yeah, thanks, man. yeah, thanks really so much. Really appreciate it. You bet. My 69 convertible. Hideaway headlights. Hey, it's got 70s mirrors like me. Everything else is 69 era. Pretty funny. Just the mirrors. Hey guys, got another hot firebird here. We're going to talk to Dave. I want Dave Hi. to share exactly what's going on with this with this bird of his. Okay, this is a matching numbers, 1968, nightshade green, 68, 400 Firebird. What? Wait a minute, that's green? That is nightshade green, yeah. It's got a mix of grays and blues and... Oh man, I might it, have to do a color change. It's a, <laughs> it's a one year only color, the rarest of the production colors. Well, walk around the car, any other details you like that's... Yes, the uh, gentleman that did the uh, paint job on it, he uh, does all of Tim Allen's cars, so they took it down to bare metal, lined it up perfectly. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The car was gone about a year and a half. They also did the wheels on it. Oh, yeah, they look good. Yep, and uh, yeah, it's the paint job's still almost 10 years old, and it's still holding up. Original interior, original door panels, carpet. Original Alpine stereo. <laughs> original Love Alpine. It. But that is a Japanese Alpine. It was the first generation. <laughs> so the whole disc thing actually comes out. Oh, nice. It is made in Japan, so it is a little bit different. So um, how many owners do you think? Um, as far as I know, before I got it, there was two owner owners. Gotcha. And uh, a lot of the stuff is NOS. The Firebird emblems are NOS. These were in the original GM package. Okay, yep. Yeah, they're all NOS. All the moldings, the skirt moldings were NOS. So a lot's been done to it. Hmm. They re chromed the back, num the back bumper. It wasn't that bad, but I just wanted it. Perfect. Oh, it looks great. Yeah. I, I rear ended a pole. Oh, ouch. So, I mean, mine looks terrible. But yeah, but they did a nice job. This is that looks great. This is super, uh, super straight. One that we're gonna keep, so it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Hey, That's it. that was awesome. Thanks so much, Dave. You're um, welcome. Thank you. you. Know, it's great meeting you, you by too. the way. And you too. He's a, he's a member of our FMG family as well. So awesome. Um, yeah, good times. Yeah, good times. So let's have a good day. All right. Look at this, guys. A butler with a pro charger. This is no joke. Wow. Interior looks original. Woo. Big fan of green. Nice. Guys, this is my favorite build of all time. This is my buddy, Brendan Vatuski. Did I get it right? No. <laughs> Brendan Vatuski. Did I do it wrong again? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Tusky. This is my buddy, Brendan Vatuski. Yep. Did I get it right this time? You got it right oh, this time. sweet. Now, I'm going to let Brendan take it from here because I'll give you background. I met Brendan at a Pontiac show way before Fast Monty's garage existed and he rolled in with this thing and I was like what in the hell's going on so I'm gonna let him give us the history and his design cues and we'll walk around the car and go from there take it away Brendan all right well this is my 1967 Pontiac Firebird it's a car I picked up in 2009 it was uh, basically like an original survivor but it was really 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 rusty so tore it apart got a body you know acid dipped Nothing came back, it was just Swiss cheese. So it's like, do I throw this out and start over or it's a clean slate to do anything and everything I can, I yeah. can come up with. So I went with the ladder, bought a second parts car. So everything from the firewall forward is from another survivor car that was much more solid than mine. Oh, wow, okay. And I wanted something that could be vintage aesthetics with modern performance. Yeah. So I went with the late model engine, 
late model aftermarket suspension, so it's all Detroit Speed suspension. It's a LS engine out of an 01 Pontiac Trans Am. I know the purists, like our buddy John, hate Where that. John, John, yeah, John, John, John's, John's the naysayer Pon over it's there. Out of, it's out of a Pontiac. It's yeah. okay. It's a Pontiac engine. It was born <laughs> in a Pontiac. It's still in a Pontiac, and it's painted Pontiac blue, by the way. Yes, it is. And and. Uh, Anyways, T56 manual, you know, Magnum transmission, six-speed manual, 12-volt posi rear, and the engine is several inches back. Hmm. The subframe, uh, the subframe is welded in, so I've got solid mounts with it welded in. I've got hoop supports welded in. It's fully boxed in. I've got subframe connectors. Everything is all, all connected. There's a six-point roll cage in here, but there's 17 points of contact on the body. So I mean, this this car is nice and solid. There is just the only wow. flex is the suspension. Car handles great, drives great. Uh, I've had it over 135 at an open track day. That was in fifth gear. Still had 1,000 RPM to go, and I had sixth gear. So the <laughs> engine could do a lot more. I right. was getting concerned about the aerodynamics and lift on the front end at that point. Because yeah. even though when, when the hood is on it, I've got vents in the back to relieve some of the pressure. I've got a chin spoiler in the front. But I've never put tufts on this. I've never taken it to a, a wind tunnel and checked all that out to make sure I'm actually getting proper yeah, downforce. Don't you need to be like 180 miles an hour for that? Maybe. I'm not an aeronautical <laughs> engineer, but uh, the idea. So, yeah, I you mean, know, the tires, dude. What? Uh, how wide did you go? You just got so these tires. These are 18 by 12 in the back with a 335 tire. So it's mini tub front and back. Nice. And I relocated the quarter panel when I replaced them. Uh -huh, so okay. most people, they'll put it on and they'll bow out this area. I didn't want that bubbly, bulging yeah. look. So I attached it here. I added about an inch and a half on each side, enough to fit the 69 Trans Am spoiler, and then made a sliver of metal, like a pie crust, and just brought it out. So it's basically what they did in 69 when they unpinched the back end a little bit, because these cars naturally, like yep. the stock version, they get very, very pinched wow. in the back. So That's very creative. Just keeps it out. And of course, added the fender vents, here for a rear air brake ducting. I've so your design, your design intent, mind you, was no paint, right? No, that was just me being lazy. Oh, okay. And impatient. Okay. When I was probably three, four years in the build, because it took me five and a half years from take take out the old engine to starting up this car, sure. as you see it. Five and a half years of every weekend: Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I know much. the drill. I know the drill. <laughs> I was, I would just want to drive the thing. Yeah, you know for what? Sure. I don't want it to sit in a paint shop for another seven months or a year. Let alone all the money that that goes into a proper paint job. Yeah, I'm yeah. just going to clear it, yeah. work the bugs out. You know, debug it, have fun with it, and then I'll just paint it later. Well, and, that, and that's why the <laughs> the shots I just showed you guys, you can see where Brendan put the welds for that sliver of material in the in the fender and it had to grind it down because yes like you look like me i'm a shitty welder but i'm a fantastic <laughs> grinder yes did i just say the wrong word okay you can see the work that i did on this car and that's that's the other fun thing about having left and clear is you can see it's not a bondo queen you can see that oh wow all yeah. right there's some metal added here there's a little bit yeah. of filler there this is the factory lead this is the factory lead i didn't do that gm did that back in the day did you clear it i cleared it this is oh, okay. kbs coating diamond okay. clear nice so there's one major detail you're leaving out. Oh, there's a lot of details and I haven't covered yet. No, no, no. And it's what you do for work. Ah, I am a Talk to me about this over here <laughs> on your dashboard. Ah, yes. Well, one of the perks of the job, I'm a toy designer. I'm one of the designers for Hot Wheels at Mattel. And I had the opportunity to replicate my car into a 164 scale die cast. So it came out in 2017, as you see it there. So jealous. <laughs> I will admit it's very humbling. It's very, um, very grateful for that opportunity, yeah. and I love it. Um, yeah. You know, I've handed out probably half a dozen of these to kids this morning. I see them walk by. I was like, "Here, have a car." Nice. Now they have a Pontiac at today's car show too. So. <laughs> yes, the Pontiac yes. at this show, and that's what when we first met. I will never forget that because I swear to God, I was like, "You have my dream job." <laughs> I, you probably have a lot of car guys' dream job. And it was like, blew my mind. And then you busted out the car. Yeah. The the, the, the Hot Wheels version. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I just, my jaw hit, hit the floor. <laughs> and then when I was shopping at the grocery store, like a few months later, I found it on the shelf, oh, which nice. was even 
yeah. more mind blowing. Yeah, right? yeah. Besides the one you gave me, right? You know, I found it actually and bought it. Yeah, it, it, that was pretty neat. And gave that one to my son. So, oh, cool. Yeah, he loves it. So he's gonna love seeing this video Excellent. because now he'll believe me. I, I do know that guy. <laughs> yes, right. uh, also, was fortunate enough to be featured in Carcraft magazine, October two thousand eighteen. <laughs> A uh, few different uh, TV shows. It's been on uh, Fast and Loud. It's been on the History of Hot Wheels 50th anniversary, and most recently on Life Size, uh, an exclusive Motor Trend on Demand TV show. Oh, cool! So a little uh, little episode there, Very about cool. 11 minutes long. So Very cool. check that out if you get a chance, because it's a lot of fun. We take this to the track, and uh, we burn some tires up doing oh, it. Oh, nice! So. And is that on? A, is that a YouTube video? Yeah, or uh, that's part of Motor Trend's uh, exclusive content. Okay. So you got to subscribe to their their oh, thing, gotcha. but. Motor Trend on Demand, and then they have like six little mini series of Hot Wheels about life-size Hot Wheels cars, and they like the Twin Mill, the Bone oh, Shaker, yeah, the yeah. Diora 2. I remember when you were advertising that yeah. to get us to, to watch that. And then that. my car. The car car handles really, really well. Those Toyo tires, they're 275s in the front, Man. 335s in the back. Yeah. I can turn lock to lock, go through full suspension travel without hitting the body, because I've mini tubbed it front and rear, as well as notch the frame. I use uh, 69Z28 steering arms, which are a little shorter, so okay. I get quicker response with steering. And love it, love the oh, way it man. drives. I use Hydro Boost. I don't have to worry about vacuum from the engine, so the engine. I have Hydro Boost too. Yes, Hydro Boost is the best. If yes. you're building a hot rod, yep. muscle car, go with it. Love you it. can make the pedal so sensitive, it's as perfect as any late model car. It's Absolutely. Just, just tap on it and yep. the brakes work. Well, Brendan. Thank you so much. Thank Great you. seeing you yeah, finally. You we too. don't have to wear masks. Yeah. That's the other thing. But man, I've never gotten an official tour of your car and I appreciate you doing that for us and oh, especially for the channel. Thank you. Yeah. You guys, I hope that gave you some ideas for your build. You don't have to keep it classic-ish like mm -hmm. mine. Yeah. You can go to the extreme like Brendan did. So man, I love it. Thanks. Hey guys, it's a wrap. I got to get home, three hours of traffic. This was the first major test drive to get here, which was an hour and 15 minutes. No, I'm sorry, hour, 115 miles, an hour and a half, basically. White knuckling it, watching my gauges, no leaks, we're good. So now I have a three hour drive home. I'm not looking forward to that. So other than that, you guys know the drill, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.